Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well and welcome to our latest naval battle which, if everything works, should be a really good demonstration of where DCS has got to in late 2023. Finally, we can run this battle and I've always wanted to. First, what are we doing and why are we doing it? Well, we've been revisiting naval battles 1960 to year 2000 and redoing them to a modern specification. Uh, the most recent ones we've done are 1990s US carrier group versus 1990s Russian carrier group. That was pretty good. And 1980s, we're going in reverse, US carrier group versus not 1980s Soviet carrier groups because we don't have the 1980s uh, Soviet Kiev class carriers from the 80s. So instead we did a, a 1980s Soviet bomber regiment. So now we're on to the 1970s US carrier group versus another carrier group. Well, that's a problem because there are lots of other 1970s carrier groups around the world but none that could stand up to a Nimitz class supercarrier group. So instead we had to make an amalgamation. How about this? A US 1970s carrier group versus four 1980s carrier groups from around the world. Argentina, Brazil, France and UK. First, Overview, 190 miles between carrier groups with bullseye in the middle of Guam. U.S. in blue, the amalgam in red. U.S. carrier group from 1970s is a Nimitz-class supercarrier. They started service in 1975. Carrier, 106,000 tons heavy, containing 32 F-14A Tomcats and 32 a4e skyhawks we're not including auxiliary aircraft in these fights total seven ships 64 aircraft and the red amalgam we have a 1980s argentina carrier group they had uh, two carriers this one is the bientesenco de mayo heavy 20,000 tons it actually was a ex uk colossus class from the 1960s i think on board her maximum complement of 20 a4 Qs, the most modern A4s that they ran at the time. Next, Brazil, 1980s, the Minas Gerais, 20,000 tons, and by coincidence, she was also an ex 1960s UK Colossus class carrier. They ran Skyhawks as well, 20 A4 Ks. 1980s France, Clemenceau, 33,000 tons, maximum complement, 30 Super Etendards. And finally, 1980s UK, Invincible class, 22,000 tons heavy, max 18 Sea Harrier FRS-1s. Total, 10 ships, 88 aircraft. Now the details. Let's start with America. So they have 15 by 15 mile battle formation with the carrier here, Nimitz Supercarrier. They have escorts from the time. The only escort I have from the mid 1970s is Oliver Hazard Perry. And so, of course, that's what we've got. Six escort ships. Her air wing are two squadrons of Tomcats, F-14A from the 1970s. They have a loadout from the 1970s. They have two Sparrows, F variant, which came into service 1976. Their most modern sidewinder at the time was the Lima model, came into service 1977. And they have four A model Mark 60 AIM-54 Phoenixes and fuel tanks. AI all the same today. Maximum skill level, but otherwise I've given them no extra commands. 32 of them. Next, two squadrons of Skyhawk E models carrying the max capacity of four uh, Sidewinders. The Papa 5 model uh, would be the best model they could carry, otherwise set up the same. We will have humans, respawning humans on each side. Uh, they will have either the Tomcat or the A4 Skyhawk and they will start from the air because they do not work well with AI on supercarriers. Next, the Amalgam and this is what today is all about. Finally, 2023, I can do these carrier groups. Brazil, Argentina, France and Britain. 1980s specification with a good set of realism. Uh, let's start with UK. Invincible, obviously we had the carrier uh, in the 1980s. Uh, aboard her are her maximum 18 Harriers. They are Sea Harrier FRS-1. Uh, they will be equipped. Oh, we're using an AV-8B. It's the closest we have, but kinematically it's actually going to be pretty similar. And the extra systems that the AV-8B has, this is a Harrier 2 obviously, aren't really going to make a huge difference. 
So we have her latest missiles. Uh, they were in 1982 given to Britain, the L model Sidewinder. During 1982, they were rigged to carry four. So we've got four of those plus two fuel tanks. The gun is the wrong gun for the Sea Harrier, but it's going to be close enough for today. It's a gun. Probably the most unrealistic thing we're going to see here is the Chapman Flare. The FRS-1 carried two ANALE-40 dispenser systems in the 1980s, maximum 30 flares. Uh, these have 120 flares, the Harriet 2, and I can't reduce that. So they're going to have three times too many flares. It's annoying, but it's the best we can do. Otherwise, it's pretty good analog. Next, Clemenceau. We have been played by the Clemenceau. And a massive thanks to all the mod makers. There's lots of them, probably too many to mention as ever. Uh, the mainstay of the Clemenceau was, of course, the Super E in the 1980s. Super E is going to be carrying her latest missile, which will be the Magic 2, 1984, entered service and fuel tanks. 30 of them. Next, we have Brazil uh, with the X Colossus, which we have here. We have Skyhawks. Now, this is where it gets a little bit controversial. It's really hard doing research to find out exactly what Brazil and Argentina and you know, were running in the 80s. And there's always a bit of leeway as well because, you know, it's a whole decade we get to play with. As far as we can find out, they only had two pylons wired for Sidewinders. So we've done that. And the best we think they had was the P model. That's the export version of the L model in the mid 80s. So two P ones which were semi all aspect sidewinders 20 of those on a colossus argentina it's going to be slightly controversial again again finding this information is nay on impossible on the internet you really need a, a period accurate book which obviously we just ain't got time for um it's the q model uh, they ran b c's i think and q's and obviously we're going to use the q's same thing it appears that they had two sidewinders uh, two pylons wide, wide for sidewinders the best we think they had b models in 1982 falklands war we think they were upgraded a few years after with the export l i think sorry if i've got that wrong uh, so two p's and uh, fuel tank and cannon they have some escort ships but i doubt they'll play much part in today there's also a human version of the a4 and the harrier that we can bring in which brings us to tactics it's no surprise obviously an f-14 was way ahead of anything and its time at a hugely powerful radar hugely powerful long-range missiles which is why i had to have four carrier groups to go up against it the best way i could get the red four to sort of balance that out is to do a zerg rush to get as many aircraft up and into action as soon as possible to swamp the F-14s. If I just filter them in kind of one by one, they're just going to get picked off at long range and they're going to do no good. So um, I've looked at figures for all these carriers and I've calculated that, and I'm pretty sure this is realistic, over the whole carrier group, so four carriers, we should be able to take off an aircraft every 18.5 seconds. That's really good. And that's better than a single US uh, supercarrier. So I've scripted in those takeoffs to happen. So every 18.5 seconds, an aircraft is going to be taking off. And that, like I said, should be accurate. Why? Well, we've got a single catapults on the colossus we've got twin catapults on the sem and we've got a single ramp on the um invincible and my theory is just get them up as quickly as possible swamp the uh, f-14s overwhelm them and almost like a ant chasing down a, a, a grasshopper or something just jump on their back and, and confuse them that's the best i've got i've not managed to run the whole thing through because these things are uh, troublesome at best so i don't know who's going to win there's going to be no anti-shipping today for lots of reasons, but it's going to be air-to-air. -air. Who's going to win the air-to-air -air war overall, guys? Yeah, I suspect it's going to be the uh, the Americans will, will win this one. Yeah, I think if uh, Reds are in any form of a shot, there's going to have to be a numbers game. And if they lose that first swarm, then it's game over. The Phoenix gives a, a big advantage to the Americans. They can hit the Red Force before Red Force can get in range. I know the Phoenix is a bit unreliable against fighters, but even so. Welcome into the battle, viewers. Um, I just had a question. Why am I using 1970s US versus 1980s for the rest? Uh, it's just what I've got, viewers. I can, I think, do Brazil 1970s. I think... I can do 1970s Argentina. I can't do 1970s France. I don't have what I need. Um, I, s I can't really do 1970s Britain either. We would need an Ark Royal and we would need naval phantoms. And So basically, I, I can't quite do it. This is a, the, the closest I can do of an amalgam that should be competitive and I can actually model at the moment. Um, stuff's always been added into games, so um, maybe we can revisit the 1970s in six months or so. So, Reds, we have Matrix, Dark, Cannonball. Uh, Americans, we have Wardog, Haraf, and Simba. Uh, and pause server, please. Viewers, 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 
I am so excited about this. I've been wanting to do Argentina, Brazil, Britain, France for so long now. Look, and they're all actually taking off the carriers in the right planes with the right stores. Well, pretty much, you know, near enough for today. Yes, they're working. Brazil takes off. Argentina takes off. France takes off. What about the Brits? What about the Brits? They're still finishing their tea. But we are finishing our tea, Simba. Yes, off we go. Royal Navy to space. Also, technically, we had a better carrier group um, in 1970s. Britain viewers, we had F4 Phantoms with BVR <laughs> missiles. Our 1980s <laughs> ones were uh, not BVR. They were within visual range Harriers only. Yes, Simba, can we help you with something? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. You said something funny. No, I mean, we had a better carrier group than ourselves in 1980s. Oh, okay. So our carrier groups were stronger in 1970s than they were in 1980s uh, because we had to cut the budget in 1980s. Viewers, here's the High Fidelity Super Carrier. By allowing it to operate like this, we get absolute realism. The real takeoff rates of this carrier. The only problem is they tend to get jammed up after a while. A model Tomcats with the TF30 engines, the original engines, the bad ones. And up they go. Reiterate viewers of absolutely no idea who's going to win today. It's, it's just so many variables in this. Uh, we've got time, so let's talk about tech, viewers. Uh, the F-14A was just an uh, absolute monster for its time. Massively powerful radar that could see over 100 miles. Missiles, the Phoenix missiles, anti-bomber but can be used against fighters. Uh, could go over 100 miles. Sparrows, sidewinders, all aspects sidewinders. Wow, Wardog's gone in a Skyhawk. Brave. Whereas everything in red was really designed around cheap operation. Sea Harrier was a good plane, but and it had a radar, but its maximum firing range was 10 miles at best. Also a subsonic plane, uh, whereas of course Tomcat could do over Mark II, so kinematically much worse. Two of the factions have A4s, you know, kind of 1950s aircraft essentially, with sidewinders. Super Dendar was probably the best plane here but again it's absolutely not a thoroughbred fighter in any way it's really a, an attack aircraft complete difference in doctrine uh let's go and have a look at those carriers again who doesn't want to see that look at that viewers ex-british colossus run by argentina ex-british colossus run by brazil uh bespoke clemenceau r98 carrier from france and uh, the new line of carriers at the time in the 1980s, again, for budget cutting reasons, we had the Invincibles, uh, smaller than the carriers that we used to run in the 1960s and 1970s, but still pretty cool and did their job in uh, Falklands conflict. Just have a look at Doctor in here. Now, here's something really interesting, viewers. Now, bear in mind, I didn't script any speeds, altitudes, or I didn't script anything. Everything is just left to the pilots. AI, Tomcats are going high. Exactly as they would do in real life. They are designed to go 40,000 feet and rain down hell upon bears and badgers. Now look at the reds. They're all at sea level. And I include AI in this. They've all gone to sea level. Or 4,000 feet. You know, that's low. That's because they know the threat that's coming at them. And that is these big Phoenix missiles. Phoenix missiles are great against high level bombers, which is what they were designed to attack. They are terrible, terrible, terrible against anything low level. Look at the size of them. They have no aero at all. So the red, AI, and humans are doing what they need to do to survive Tomcats. And that is, Jesus Christ, like a matrix. He's one lag spike away from ending up in the drink. And They're that following is, me off the side. The fearless leader. Probably exactly what a sea harrier would do in real life. Yeah, if there's a windsurfer out here, I'm toast. Yeah, very hard for even the mighty AWG-9 radar from the 1970s to see that Harrier. It will get lots of ghost returns and problems. <laughs> Distance between front, of course, Matrix at the front, of course he is. 60 miles, no missiles out, why? Well, exactly the reason I said, you just can't see him down there. And don't worry about ECMs, viewers. Uh, the AV-8B technically does have an ECM jammer, uh, but that said, the FRS-1 was jerry rigged in 1982 with ecms so that's kind of realistic uh, the skyhawks i don't think they do and they don't have in game either and the tomcats is not going to matter anyway 
Uh, so it's, you know, it's a pretty good analogue today. Matrix at 25 feet, and that's a top of the aircraft to the, uh, the sea. That's scary. Oh, that's okay, because he's gone down to 20. Yeah, so it's just not going any lower, Matrix. Down come the Tomcats. Look, look, he's struggling to see him. He's trying to find... He knows he's there because it's AI, and AI just sort of know people are there. It's just how to get it to work. But he can't find... He can't do anything. He can't find him on his radar. Very interesting. Mm. Got a missile. Got a Phoenix out. Up it goes to space. That's from here, probably on that guy there. More missiles out. Phoenix is out. Nowhere near the maximum firing range, and that's because the targets are A, hard to see, and B, really low down. This is going to be nothing, viewers, but super, 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 super interesting. This is everything the Tomcats hate. Low, small targets. This is a real bust of a missile, viewers. Terrible aero, so it has to go high. Sorry, Simba, I'll cut you off. I was going to say, I think the goal is to uh, throw that big telephone pole into the water and uh, throw some seawater down the intake. Why not? It'll, if nothing else, it will rust their fan blade, Simba. Okay, someone's just thrown their tanks off and is getting chased by this missile. Oh, this guy is just spamming the missiles in now. They've gone over the top. Now, here's the thing, they've gone over the top. They're ignoring. That's exactly what they should do. They should go over the top of the reds and just shoot down on them. Missiles raining down on the Super E's. I'm a bit of a fan of the Super E viewers. Let me know what you think. But here's the problem. As soon as they get in that high pressure air down low, they become a terrible missile. And look, the Tomcats have done exactly what the reds wanted. They should, have they should have done standoff. Instead, they've gone in close. Like I said, the analogy of ants crawling over a big spider or something. Oh, I'm down. What happened, Matrix? Was it yourself? No, something hit me. Roger. Okay, that's because uh, Tomcats Phoenix. are now in ACM. Oh, they're just chewing through planes. For viewers, it's hard to see all the kills. Okay, 1A4 down, 2 C Harriers down. Trying to look for more kills. That's going to miss. Oh, a magic out. And a, and a sparrow out. Magic evaded. Sparrow, not going to be evaded, probably. See Harriet in all kinds of trouble. Pop. See Harrier down. Four Sea Harriers down, that is unfortunate. A9L's out, 1977 missile. Oh, evaded. And a Tomcat has got in ACM, and he's fully committed in ACM. But look, he can blow through. He's such a fast fighter. Wings back, smashes out a Mach 1. And those uh, Skyhawks are going struggle to follow. They fired a missile, but it failed to track. Big hot engines on an uh, F-14. It's actually a really good dogfight match for an A-4, hence why they had A-4s as aggressors in Top Gun school. Aim 9 L dodge. Wow, seven reds down. Two A-4s, one uh, Super E is down. All sorts of targeting problems for the... Blues, they don't know what to go for. Every dot is basically a bad guy. The Phoenixes have done terribly, kind of as we thought. Sparrows are doing really well. Eight red down, not a single blue down. Wowie! The mob mentality is just not working. Sparrow seems to be weapon at the moment. Another A4 just got shot down. Cannonballs firing on the rear of a Tomcat. A9L out for someone. Super E takes it in the chuff. Maybe it's best if I just lock onto a Tomcat and imagine being in that dogfight viewers. What a nightmare for everyone involved. The Reds can't fire because the chance of friendly fire is too high. The Blues haven't got a clue what to fire at because there's so many targets. Looks like there's a gunfight towards the front. Yeah, I'm trying to watch. Magic being fired. Nine Red down, not a single Tomcat down. That's amazing, absolutely amazing. In terms of fuel endurance, the red aircraft have non-afterburning engines apart from the Super E, so we'll go for longer. The Tomcats will rely on those big reheated turbo fans. Two Tomcats shot down. The swarm is beginning. Good evasion. That's a radar notch right there. Oof. Oh, Tomcat down in the face. Took a magic two. That is legal tender. It's a 1984 all aspect missile from France. Pretty good missile. Nine red down, three Tomcats down, and they're starting to struggle. They get, oh yeah, they've got Skyhawks all over their backs. There's nowhere for them to turn. Has any human F-14s been shot down yet? It's really hard to follow from a spectator position. Negative. I still haven't seen a uh, Phoenix hit anything yet. Come on, give me a Phoenix kill. They're all up at 60,000 feet. Look at the trouble the Tomcats have got, viewers. If that was me, I would just spam everything everywhere and probably die. I 
think the AI are just getting confused with target saturation, which is a real thing, viewers. It's like, I go for that target, no, I should go for that target, no, I should go... Oh, and then that happens. Five Tomcats down, back in. Oh, Simba's coming in, he's fed up and he's coming in. Now, why is it so hard for Simba? I imagine because he's got so, so many small targets down low, spinning around. That is a nightmare for even the modern radar to track and find. Let alone a 1970s radar. I bet he's got all kinds of problems. Same problem for the AI. Area down. 14. Red down. 6. Tomcat's down. Simba's on a blow through. Which I would agree is good, a good idea. I... So what he's going to do is swoop down, take a shot. Swoop down, take a shot. But it's just not that easy. Shot. Super E down. Oh, and a Phoenix at point blank friggin' range. Where was that going? Using it as a dogfight missile. Worst dogfight missile I've ever seen. Just doesn't work down here. Simba's put a Phoenix in again, kind of using it as a dogfight missile. Will it track? This missile has its own radar on, so it'll self-guide, but it's just not very good down here. Let's see. It's tracking. And it's got a Super E. No Skyhawk. And beaten kinematically... No. Beaten kinematically by a Skyhawk. That shows how unmaneuverable those big missiles are down here. Everyone raves how good they are. They weren't really very good at all. Unless you're an unmaneuvering bear. Which are, we are the antithesis of that right now. I'm obviously favouring the red side viewers because I'm UK, but... Everyone loves a Tomcat. Right. Dogfight guns. Simba's got himself into a sexy dog fight. That's a hard fight. F-14A versus Skyhawk. Skyhawk's a brilliant plane, viewers. In the right hands, it can now dog fight a, a Tomcat. And these Tomcats are really heavily loaded with fuels, weapons. Each one of those Phoenixes is like half a ton, viewers. Half a ton of wing loading that adds. Tomcat! Oh, look at that. Barrel roll and flares for the win. Dodge one, another three come right at you. Wow, two to one kill ratio. 16 reds down. And he's about to get a Brazilian papa. And he's bop bop, and there it is. Doesn't see it coming. Bop. Nine Tomcats down. The reds are starting to bring it back, and Simba's just bitten off more than he can chew. Oh, and he dodges just at the last second. Barrel roll and flares. He's, Simba's got the same problem as all the AI. He's now covered in ants. You can beat one, but you can't watched, beat two. Just watched four in nine chase down a, a 14. It's funny. Bang! Well, viewers, this is... Simba gets a shot. Oh, and it's evaded. Why? The Skyhawk has a small, cold engine, relatively, and big, bright flares, and Simba finally gets shot down. He survived, but he was surrounded. Surrounded in these things. The tactic is working. Look at that. 18 reds, but 13 Tomcats now. They go in, they get themselves inevitably into ACM, which you just do. Because it's so hard to see these little critters with the radar. Almost impossible. You get frustrated, you have to go down into ACM, and they jump on you. There's going to be lots of downvotes and lots of cutting of your Patreon pledges, but... Amalgam is doing well. And it's all set up fair and square, viewers. I mean, I'm not saying 80s is fair with 70s, but otherwise it's all set up fair and square. How's our carrier doing? Stand by. Tell me it's not bugged already. We're only friggin' 20 minutes in. No, one's got his afterburner on. I think it's fine, Simba. Yeah, they're taking off. Nearly gave me a heart attack there. I don't know why there's such a big gap, but they are taking off. That, I'm afraid, is a carrier problem. That's not my problem. Phoenix is, again, less maneuverable than the planes that they're trying to shoot down. The Russian equivalent, the off. 37 has the same problem. Lots of people say, oh, it's an amazing missile. It'll shoot down flankers at 200 miles. No, it won't. It's got exactly the same problem as this missile. Wow, yeah, big gap there, viewers. Huge gap. They just had a bit of an inefficiency on the carrier tech. And that is the controller's problem. Flight boss. Dogfight away. Phoenix fired at point blank range. Just gotta give the Reds a chance to get the ball. Well, here's the tactically, still, uh, the Blues are winning. If you want to know who win, wins tactically, viewers, look where the position of balls and look where the bulk of the fighting is. The bulk is in this territory. God, a poor hurrah. He's going into a spider's web of nightmarishness.
you almost want to just ACM those um, Phoenixes. Oh, he's already done it. Oh, in fact, he's already used all his missiles. Blues have lost 17 Tomcats. Well, 16 and 1A4. They fired 57 Phoenixes and Sparrows and 13 Sidewinders at a cost of 1.4 billion. I can't remember if it's inflation adjusted or not, and hurrah! Gets taken out. You're in anywhere within 10 miles, there's going to be someone pointing at you with a Sidewinder. You know what this is? It's like Sparta fighting, all looking outwards with their uh, pointy things. America have had to recover, lick their wounds, and find a way around this problem. Simba, talk us through it. How are you going to try and find a way through this? Uh, I don't have to find a way through. I just let them come to me. Well, they certainly are doing that. And in fact, Blues have now pushed Bullseye. Red don't have the tech. They have the advantage in numbers, the way they're using the numbers, the way they're using the altitude. Um, and fuel. Fuel's a really important one. These Skyhawks will go forever. Tiny little weedy engines that don't burn any fuel. Uh, F-14s. But afterburner can go, what, 150 miles? And then they're out of fuel. Things are slowing down on the Reds, though. Argentina is out of planes. 20 planes, they're gone. Brazil are out of planes. 20 planes and they're gone. Um, Harriers are taking off at a slower rate because of the ski ramp. Or the way we've got the ski ramp set up. So I think they're still going. Yeah, they're still going. Uh, the Super E's are still going because they carry more on the Clem. 19 red down to 18 blue down. Blues have licked their wounds. They're coming in with a renewed push. And Phoenix is out for what it's worth. I think I can actually see the targets. Look, can you see the targets there in the clouds, viewers? Reds may have made a mistake here. They've gone high. Now, this may be their undoing. Why have they gone high? It's fuel consumption is so much better up high. But it puts them in the envelope of the Phoenix missile. That's what I would worry about. Also, I noticed the Super E's are doing better than the AV-8Bs, sorry, the Sea Harriers and the Skyhawks. I wonder why. That I don't know. Simba's just planted out a load of missiles. Pang, 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 pang. The CD's 54 goes in. Telegraph poles raining in. There's the target. Super E's detected the threat. And evading. And diving. And pretty much out on the missile. Phoenix is struggling again. And forced the Tomcats into ACM again. And the red flight models are pretty good. AV-8B is very close to a Sea Harrier. Uh, the A4 is very well modelled. Very realistic. The SEM is probably the least realistic here, but it's actually pretty good. It's not over modelled, really. And the Phoenixes are struggling again. Once they're down here, they've sub 500 knots. And they're not really much threat at all. Even to a Skyhawk, look. No kills. Not a single kill from those Phoenixes that I saw. Tomcat's best bet is hit and run. Staying fast and hit and run. Not what this guy's doing. It's gone all Top Gun. 28 minutes into the simulation. Twenty-one red down to eighteen blue down. Tomcat getting his eye in. <laughs> Pang! See how you're down. Tomcat owns the vertical. It's the only thing here with a power to weight ratio to really go vertical like that. But it doesn't really matter. If there's more than one target, hostile against. This guy, it really doesn't matter if he goes vertical. They'll just use geometry to get onto his... Eventually, someone will get a sidewinder shot on him, or he'll run out of flares. A thing will happen. There we go. Super E's got him. Oh, shot! Super E! Twin Depper Cannon. That is unfortunate, but he got swamped. 26 reds down to 20 blues down. 29 minutes in. Oh, Tomcat down. Don't know where it came from. It came from somewhere. So missiles to go in. Impossible friendly fire situation. No. Even smacking the body. The Reds are performing admirably today. Carry is functioning. And we now have Skyhawks taking off. So all 32 Tomcats apart from those four. Oh, hello. Oh, there's a Tomcat gone through a jet blast effector. I've got to go and stay here and see whether they work or not. 
at, look at the Zerg Rush. The Zerg Rush is going mental. Oh, we're going to have SM2s out soon from the carrier group. We've got that close. Who would have thought that? Huge barrage of AIM 54s coming in. AIM 9L out. Evaded by Super E or uh, Skyhawk. Check out Dark and Simba. Oh, the me. boys, boys, boys. A human on human. Evil versus Tonka. You could not script that. That's beautiful, guys. Gonna be a real chance to see the benefits and disadvantages of these jets and the Tomcat oh. wins. God, I don't know what to watch, viewers. I saw an M54 kill there. Oh, that one's not gonna kill anything. 140,000 feet. Uh, Super E chasing a Tomcat down. Super E's, although not as good as a Tomcat, are reheated. So they've got power. Oh, look at that for a dogfight, viewers. That Tomcat is bugged on the cat. All oh, right, I'll go back to it and look in a minute, guys. Just ignore it for a second. Just got to see these dogfights through. A poor old A-model Tomcat's just got himself locked into an ACM he doesn't want to be in. Death for cat. Oh, and you lost a wing. Man, all right, carrier, got to do my, oh, A4s are taking off, okay. Here's the situation, viewers. Uh, the last four Tomcats have got bugged, uh, but the A4s are operating around them, so I think until I see A4s stop operating, we'll leave them for now, as it's just the last flight of Tomcats. It's just stuff we have to do, viewers, it's annoying, but so I'll leave it for now, and I will keep an eye on it. Right, back to the action. Dogfights, you'll see lots of these today, viewers. 35 reds down to 24 blues down. And. Run, little Skyhawk, run! Pop! Sparrow. Evaded. And a big old dogfight in there somewhere. Oh my god, this guy got everything fired at him! Oh my god, he got five sidewinders hit him! Five! He's already dead! Leave him! That pilot didn't survive. And demonetized. 38 reds down to 27 blues down. Phoenix is fired in the middle of this. What a dangerous thing to do. Uh, aim 9. Easily evaded by the cool engine uh, flare-rich Skyhawks. So fired. Someone. Oh, good evasion from a Super E. And dogfight. Well, viewers, if you're not turned on by this, there is 100% something medically wrong with you. I suggest get to a doctor. Get to one right now. Ah, Sparrow off the rail. And look at it bend. Look at it bend. Go, Skyhawk. Run, little Skyhawk. Smash. Tomcat, win. But as soon as they turn their back, everything, the crowd just comes at them. Oh, and he's firing a sparrow. What a sexy, sexy, sexy human. Sexy human. Super E got too far away. No, it's a sea harrier. Not a chance. 35 minutes in, and my head's just a big whirl of excellence, viewers, because this is just so cool. Super E, merge. Cost to America, 2.3 billion. Cost to Amalgam, 0 0.8 billion. Just a bunch of mega, mega dogfights. Uh-oh, that's a missile on him. Oh, and I didn't get the flares out in time. Tomcat down. Whoosh! Sexy dogfight. Tomcat chasing a Skyhawk over uh, Anderson. You want me to attempt to clear the carrier? Uh, leave it, Simba. It's operating fine. Uh, we'll deal with the Tomcats at the end. Because we still don't know who's going to win this. Probably America by the looks of it, but I still don't know. What the hell is this guy doing? I don't know. Oh, isn't a dogfight with a SEM? Oh, this is just absolute Top Gun-esque viewers. Look at that. Gun him. Gun him now. That's Tomcat for you. Look how powerful it is ripping the sky apart and smashing the sem, but the sem goes vertical. I think he might have a friend out here as well. Mm. 
Yes, he did. He had back up. And Tomcat fell into the vertical trap. Sorry, sir. Not today. 51 red down to 30. At these kill rates, America is going to win. But it's almost out of Tomcats. And it's been relying on its Tomcats to get a good kill ratio. Smash! And wait for it. Smash! 51 to 32. Now I've got one more Tomcat left apart from the boys. Ooh, -wee. I think. Oh no! All oh, the reds are gone! Right, viewers. Argentinians finished. Brazil finished. French finished. Brits <laughs> finished. Whereas America still taking off. So the Zerg rush paid at the beginning. It did its job just as I hoped it would. But, but, but. There are no more Zergs left. Blues and pretty much down to Skyhawks, which evens the battle completely. This Skyhawk is slightly better than the uh, Red Skyhawks. It's got better weapons with a P5. Seeker called All Aspect Sidewinder, and it's got four of them. These guys here do not have Seeker called uh, All Aspect. They have semi All Aspect Papa Ones. Uh, it's a worse missile. Right, here we go. Another stage of the coolest battle in history. Let's go. Bunch more missiles fired by Harath. Will they do anything other than launch into orbit? Nope. If you like missiles that go into orbit, I'll give you Phoenix. Anti space shuttle? Oh, you know, I saw viewers today outside in the middle of a daytime. A massive shooting star. It went right across the horizon. I thought it must have been a plane that was on fire because it was so violent. And then it went and it just went really bright and just disappeared. I've never seen that before. A proper meteorite. And I made a wish. And I'm not superstitious, but I did. Hope it comes true. No, I didn't wish to win the lottery, by the way. Although that would be nice. Uh, right. Look how angry Zerg is, viewers. I am Zerg, and I 100% really angry and aggressive. I don't think I'd want to be on Blue's side having to face Zerg. Look at it. It's absolutely menacing. And it's all coming up for break. Hurrah! <laughs> Have fun with that. First American Skyhawk down. Didn't stand a freaking chance. Hurrah putting sparrows in. Probably missile of the day. It's performed almost 100% probability of kill. But it's fighting. And after... Oh. Papa 5's out. Good, good, good missile. If you want to understand all the different variants of the Sidewinder viewers, I would suggest just don't bother. It's like the most complicated thing ever. They don't go in sequential order. They they borrow bits from previous versions and they go back a version and then there's an export version and then it's just a nightmare. Just give me an axe. Yes. Aim on next. Do that. But then you're going to go aim on next block one, aim on next block two, aim on next block two don't plus, care. aim on next block three, all with different abilities. Oh, poor old America's just... They're putting A4s into the Zerg and failing, as you would in real life. And Zerg is nearly at Blue Carrier, 40 miles from Blue Carrier. Why are the Perrys not firing with their 1980s, 70s SM2, SM1? Because they're all down the deck. They're not in firing parameters. A4 in another dogfight, but look at Zerg. I am Zerg and I charge you. We used to do Zerg. We used to do human Zergs on uh, public service viewers, but we can't get in anymore. We just got banned from everything. It was funny. Right, Phoenix, gotta hit something in the Zerg. Everyone likes Phoenix, everyone wants to see a kill. We are 42 Seems like minutes. the um, mob is climbing a bit, so the Phoenix might have an easier time. Yes, I'm literally watching one chasing a Skyhawk now. Go on, Phoenix. You cost so much money. God damn it, you're useless. Look at Simba, he's charged head in, but oh God, he's dying. Yeah, that time when you get 31 missiles fired at you. But he gets revenge. Skyhawk down. Zerg reduced slightly, Simba. But Zerg's still inexorably charging its way towards Blue Carrier. Look at that, viewers. Zerg is the things my dreams are made of. I mean, not dreams, nightmares. Did Simba get our only uh, Phoenix kill today? Uh, very possibly. Don't worry, there, w there will be more. There will be more, Simba. My ant Zerg rush to smash. Look at how close they are now. Zerg Rush is 35 miles away from the carrier, and these Perrys be like, she what am I going to do with my terrible old 1970s Mark 1 arm launcher? Not Mark 1, Mark 13. Mark 13 arm launcher. Not a lot. Right, boys, jump on him. Jump on him now. Cost to America, 3 billion. Cost to Amalgam, 0 0.9 billion. Come on, boys, get him. Get him harder. Oh, my Zerg is going to be running out of missiles soon, isn't it? Forgot about that, viewers. We fight 99 missiles. Yes, 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 yes. Get him. Get him. That's at a shoe. Oh, and his beloved Super E, and he smashes him down. Woo. The 
missiles flying past the screen. More, 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 more. Yes, yes, yes. Right out of the jet pipe. See you later, American. Ooh wee. Climb on him, boys. Climb on him like my baby climbs on me constantly. Yes, they're gonna get him. They're gonna get him. Defo cannon. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Oh, I chewed him another one. Absolute genius. Phoenix is smashing. Phoenix kill. Damn you. Leave my Zerg alone. All we want to do is breed and multiply. Maneuver frigging kill. Zerg forced him into suicide and demonetized. <laughs> Go dodge, hurrah. Flare and barrel roll beat everything. We are now a measly 26 miles from the carrier group. Come on, Zerg. Don't run out of steam. Never run out of steam. Hurrah, you may have someone on your six. J just one. Yes. That was sarcasm, by the way. There was 26 on your six. Viewers, viewers, we don't get ones like this very often. But when we do, we like to revel in it. P5, Super E down. Doesn't matter. 20 more to go where that came from. Amalgam have just broken the 1 billion cost line. Come on, get him. Super, no, uh, a Skyhawk on Skyhawk kill. Cult marks... 26 cannon? I've forgotten. Definitely a Colt cannon. Terrible, terrible phoenixes being terrible, terrible missiles. Lost track. There goes an Nintendard with a phoenix. Ah, oh, turn that back. Oh, jeez, look at this guy. This guy's got everything after him. Viewers, and you know when I said everything? I mean, I believe I mean everything. It's hiding in a cloud like a friggin' chicken S. Someone just blew up. We're getting in the damn range. So, uh, no, Zerg, don't do it. You're too successful for your own good. It's a friggin' nerd, American nerd, just wasting all my resources. Stop wasting my resources. Can't get him, he's in the cloud. Yes! We're on him! We're on him! Oh, it breaks my friggin' heart. Viewers, that was another case of sarcasm. The lowest form of wit. Right, now switch to this guy and make him bleed. Bye -bye. 58 to 50. We're just chewing through these Skyhawks now. The blob, Zerg. Now, here's the problem. We're going to start getting uh, SM2s fired on us soon. They're going to see us. Haraf's just pumping out a bunch of Phoenixes. Yeah, I said it, Phoenixes. Skyhawk in all sorts of travailer. Those Phoenix is going. Phoenix being absolutely useless as usual. 60 to 52. Harath again has got someone on his six. Big Phoenix coming down from somewhere. I saw it. It's coming from Simba. And he's all kinds of unhappy. It's men. Oh, Jesus. Look at Harath now. Oh, and has an SM2. And just everything. Just everything is happening now. That's an A4 down. Simba Wimba. I think the Raft's just stalled his engines. Get the flakes, it'll fry right by. Yes, it really does appear to work, doesn't it? Right, now the problem with Zerg is they've been too successful viewers. They've gotten to SM2 range and they can't beat these missiles. These are really good missiles. They're not actually real missiles viewers. There's no such thing as an SM2. There are, I think, seven different variants of SM2 throughout the ages and they all do very different things. Or have different capabilities. And this is kind of an amalgam guess, uh, the kind of middle variant. Simba's firing sparrows. Straight down, look at that. Don't do it, Simba. Not my Super E. 67 of my Zerg down. Still none have run out of fuel. It's just wonderful news. Miss from Simba and some gun bullets exploding. 67 of my, my beautiful... Oh no, the SM2s. Yeah. Damn it. SM2 would pretty much have about 100% PK viewers. We are 50 minutes into the simulation. It's going to be a long one, I'm afraid. 60 yes. Nine. Toast. I'm barbecuing Simba. Huh. Yes, you'd got him as well. Human on human. In the middle of all that mess, viewers. That's human on human dogfight. You're pretty good. 
Oh, but it was worth it. Sons of bitches. Brazilians have done so well, viewers. Every time I look around, I see a friggin' Brazilian or a French man. Yeah, I said it. Brazilian and a French man. And demonetized. Finally, A4s are running out of fuel, viewers. Super E's are running out of fuel. That's the bad news. That Bucks is going to weaken my Zerg. Oh, more Super E's running out of fuel. Fuel, don't do it. Absolutely don't do it. I got hit with something. I swear those Phoenixes just lose track if they get looked at the wrong way. Take that back. No. Nope. Two and ten yards and an A4. God damn it. Get off my guys. Right, Sim is hitting the Zerg. Arath's ACM off the rail. Oof. Now that is a big warhead. You could not survive that warhead, I can tell you that, viewers. But hurrah, has got some gentlemen suitors, and that always makes me happy. Still going 53 minutes in, viewers. Our officer's out running him, look. Sim has worked his way in. Oh, he's picked up a Sea Harrier. Yeah, out accelerating a Sea Harrier. Twofold. I am coming for you. I'm a Sea Harrier. The Sea Harriers are actually really fast planes. So are the AV8Bs. Really fast planes to Mark 1. And then they just stop, obviously. In the A4, you can drop your tank as soon as you leave the carrier and so... Yeah, pretty much. Go. They just don't burn fuel. Yeah. If you like playing with unlimited fuel... Oh no, the Zerg is almost finished, but the Americans are almost finished. How many can they have? How many did I give them? 32 and 32, that's 64. Yes, it is. That's the last flight, viewers. That's the last flight of Skyhawks going up now. That's an SM2 going up. Rolling airframe missile. Piece of crap. Ain't hit no one. Look how close we got. We got within five miles of the hostile carrier viewers. Within five miles. My beautiful Super E's. I need to shoot down Matrix. It'll be my first day in three days without friendly fire killing Matrix. Huh. That's an excellent attitude to have, <laughs> Dark. Yes. Sim has got some gentleman suitors, but he's using his speedler. He's using his wings back, his Mark II. Too many parachutes. Yeah. There are quite a few of those, Simba. Super E going for these guys here, but has he got any ammo left? Unlikely. Reminds me of me and me going after flies several times. Huh. Dogfight extraordinaire. Smack. Ah, oh, Super E down. No, I think we're just going to lose it, viewers. We're just, just, just going to lose it by the slimmest of friggin' margins. Rolling frames out. Okay, there is one more Skyhawk to take off, and I'm not sure if those Tomcats are going to get off or not. It's going to be such a photo finish, this is, viewers. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. 57 minutes in. Still no friggin' idea who's going to win. Usually we've got a rough guess at this point, but... Super attendants that went back, RTB to turn back in to fight. Works for me. Oh, and a human on human. Look at this human on human. Because the reds have done so well, I'm going to put the battle over here. Reds have to fly. Bye, Matrix. 130 nautical miles in that plane, which does like 300 knots. It's a real disadvantage for reds. Oh, no. Matrix avoids. Oh, no. That Harry's alive, by the way. Here comes Simba. Yeah. Hi, yo, yo. You out of control, Matrix. Not quite. Huh. And he's out. I was spotted. Oh, the Zerg has failed. SM2s. Pesky SM2s. What pain in the ass they are. Right, I've only got two A4s left. Come on, A4s. Survive. Oh no, one of them has just been seen by a. Yeah, Harath misses. I'm assuming there's no point in respawning. No, not on red. 
one red left, one solitary red left. Fruitlessly chasing that Tomcat, which has like five times as much horsepower. Scratch it, scratch it, missile on the way. Boom! Ah, Blues win by the slimmest, slimmest of margins. Brilliant. Probably my favourite battle so far, viewers, and we've been doing this for like eight years. So the Tomcats at the beginning were nerfed because the Reds went low and notched their missiles and their M54s just will not suffice. Got them in close, surrounded them, enveloped them. Blues had a pause uh, and then came back, did a renewed attack with more vigour. That said, the Reds carried on pushed and stormed all the way to the fort within five miles of the carrier and then were just worn down slowly one by one by one by one. And eventually, Blues, in their last eight 12 aircraft, won it. So amazingly close. And who would have predicted that, guys? Just uh, pure genius, really. Uh, anyone, any comments from my boys? Don't go into the blob. Don't go into the blob, guys. Yeah, the blob certainly worked for the Red side. That was... Uh... For us, it was stay in the blob. Yep. Normally, 26 people chasing you for a day is a really good thing, but not in this instance. <laughs> it's not really, is it? <laughs> it did look good, though, viewers. It did look good. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and bye-bye.